Granted, you ever done uh, clamp? Wheel clamp? Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think I have. Very well done. <laughs> well, that's all I've got. Life of blameless excellence, Michael. But yeah, that's Can it. we ask you about that on the ACC issue? Um, what do you think, and what kind of a message does this, does this send if they don't have an inquiry? Well, I think the impression New Zealanders are going to get is that if you know someone in the National Party, you're going to be treated differently by ACC. There's a word for that. It's cronyism. And in the absence of an inquiry, I think that's the impression New Zealanders are going to be left with. Judith Collins actually needs to act now and have that inquiry put in place. There's concerns right. that the auditor, given that ACC has launched its own inquiry, that the auditor general will take that into account and that she won't launch her own, what do you make of those? Look, there's a range of issues here that I think the Auditor General will be interested in. Ministerial conduct, the conduct of the ACC board, and also the other privacy issues which the Privacy Commissioner is dealing with. This is a much wider inquiry than can be dealt with by either the Privacy Commissioner or by the police, and that's why the Auditor General should be looking at it. What do you think of the conduct of the board in particular? Well, I think there's questions to be raised about the board's conduct. Um, what we know at this stage is that a board member was approached by Bronwyn Puller, what the, we don't know that all the answers to is what then happened in terms of how ACC management got involved and what was the board member's role. This is the impression that's going to be left with New Zealanders, that if you know someone in the National Party, you'll get different treatment. That's not acceptable in government agencies. But even the suggestion of that merits an inquiry. Some would say Labour were guilty of cronyism when they were in government. I'm just dealing with the situation we've got in front of us now, which is a situation where New Zealanders will have the impression that if you know someone in the National Party, you're going to be treated differently by ACC. I think most New Zealanders would regard that as cronyism, and that's not something we would expect in our public sector. In the Robin Pullis case, she clearly doesn't accept that she has been treated differently. She hasn't got what she wants. Just because someone doesn't get what they want, it doesn't mean that there aren't issues of cronyism or conflict of interest. If somebody's case goes directly to a senior manager rather than through a normal route, that is the impression that people have been treated differently regardless of the outcome. But she was clearly a persistent litigant, if you like, constantly on them. Wouldn't it have made sense that at some point a more junior staff member would have handed her on to a senior staff member to deal with her and she was so constant in her? The problem is the timing of events here the role of, and these are the questions we've got to ask about the role of the board, and also the presence of somebody like Michelle Bogue, who's clearly a senior National Party person as well, with a lot of contacts with ministers. All of these are questions that can't be resolved without a proper independent inquiry. But doesn't that show the system is robust if she went to all these great lengths? You know, to change a situation and it didn't work. Well, what it indicates to me is that somebody can be treated differently in terms of who they talk to, what happens with their complaint, if they know someone within the National Party. That's called cronyism, regardless of the outcome. What do you make of the claims that the summary of facts that were sent to the Minister's office and then subsequently to two senior ACC executives was linked to the media? Well, that's another set of questions that has to be looked at around the ministerial conduct here. We need to find out more about how information about Ms Puller found its way into the public arena. Her name, for instance, but also details of, of her case and also the role of Michelle Bogue in that case. That's a whole other set of questions that are unanswered and Judith Collins has got to answer very clearly what role her or her office had and that information getting into the public arena. Well, she she didn't want to know. What do you understand? This? Oh, we don't know. We have no confirmed information about that at the moment. But if you think about it, there are only a small number of possible sources for how that information could have made its way into the public arena. Judith Collins needs to answer very clearly whether her or her office had any role in accessing that information or in how that information made its way into the public. She says assured the Prime Minister that she didn't, but that doesn't leave many other options. Though. Well, that's the question we then have to ask is who is it then, and, and that's what she needs to be able to front up. It's the very reason why we need a proper independent inquiry, because there are so many unanswered questions about cronyism, about the role of National Party officials and supporters, and about how information made its way into the public. Arena. She says it didn't come from her office. Do you accept that? Well, we, we, need, to, we need to get into a detailed examination of exactly how that information got out. We'll be asking those questions in Parliament today. And Ms Collins then, if, if it's not from her office, needs to help explain to us how it did get out from an agency that she's responsible for. Do you think the board chairman should be offering some explanation? I think the whole role of the board in, in, in this situation needs further investigation. We have a situation where the board chair has told us that he believes that Mr McCluskey's contact should have gone through him and then into the, into the corporation. It seems there's some question about that as to whether there was direct contact between board members and staff members. So we do need more information about that, yes. Again, 
all of these things leave an impression with New Zealanders that if you know someone in the National Party, you're going to be treated differently by ACC. We have to have an inquiry to clear that up. What, what do you make of Jerry, Jerry Brown? Brownie's comments? Well, I think Murray McCulley's under a lot of pressure, and if John Key's looking for a replacement for, for Murray McCulley, it better not be Jerry Brownley. Uh, Jerry should just apologise. Um, it's an embarrassment for New Zealand. Um, Finnish television's got hold of it now. Um, I think this is a situation where Jerry just needs to realise that, that he said something silly and embarrassing and he should just apologise. He's apologised if he offended anyone. <laughs> Look, I think we need a, a full apology here. Um, we've got a situation where Jerry was trying to make some smart political remarks. Finland's a country that New Zealand has good relationship with. There's no need for this to be causing the damage it is and he should just apologise. He says he was just having a laugh in the house. Well, I mean, he needs to be pretty careful about that, doesn't he? I mean, these are relationships that New Zealand develops over a number of years. Um, he needs to get out there and on the front foot and apologise. He's clearly no diplomat, but even Jerry should be able to see now that he needs to do that. He's right, though, in that it's far from the perfect country, and we... Yep, and nobody's ever denied that. But what we were trying to say is that when you look at what's happened in Finland, it's a country that took hold of its own economic problems and said, we're going to come up with ways of solving these. We're going to actually have an economic plan. That's what's absent at the moment from the National Party. That's the point David Sherrill was making. Jerry Brownlee has then waded into it, boots and all, and caused a diplomatic incident. He should just apologise and we can get on with having a, a good relationship with Finland. And the Finns are now having a go at us as well. Do you think that's fair? Well, look, I mean, I've seen some satirical stuff on television. I imagine that would be the obvious reaction from Finland. Jury could put this to an end by just get, making an apology and getting on with it. Have you ever been to Finland? No, I haven't. But here it's very nice. Some quite personal attacks in that, in that television um, clip that you were talking about. Yeah, look, I think, I think they, they've responded because they feel that they've been slighted. Uh, I think the way of ending this would be for Jury to apologise. Jury Brownie says, at least they're talking about us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's probably not the talk that we want. Is this the worst moment in Finnish New Zealand history? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about that. Uh, I'm not an expert on Finnish New Zealand history, but it's certainly not a proud moment anyway. Mm. Just to the Auckland Ports disputes back in court today, what's your take on what's happening there? Well, clearly um, the action by the port company in, in locking out the workers in the wake of what looked like positive progress has not helped the situation. It would be interesting to see what the courts say today. But um, when you've got a situation where there was the possibility of getting back to good faith negotiations, that's obviously what everybody wants. And the actions of the port and locking out the workers was, was clearly totally unhelpful. And just on another topic, um, do you have any comment on Annie King's disclosure around Operation 8? Uh, not particularly. Um, Annette said what she said on, on Sunday as the person who was around at the time. I feel you know, she's got a lot of information that she felt was important that was in the public arena. So you essentially um, distance herself from what happened under Labour? Oh, no, I think she was just clearly explaining the situation. Um, obviously in New Zealand we don't operate a police state. The police make their decisions around um, the, the, the kinds of um, operations they undertake independently. There was a, a briefing undertaken which Annette described and I think she felt it was a, a timely to say what that had happened that time. Do you, would you support an inquiry? Um, I'm not sure that I think there's any particular need for anything more than what's already been done. The independent police complaints authority have, have done their inquiry as, as I understand it. Um, I think everyone will be interested to see the outcome of that. Oh, thank you.